Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, good morning, and welcome to another great World Government Summit. Our thanks go out to everyone who has participated up till now and has given us what we always come here each year to find, which is the transformative ideas that have shaped and changed not only the UAE, but the globe. Women in leadership are transforming societies. The rise of women leaders in communities, businesses, and political positions redefines outdated ideas of what it means to be an effective leader. It is well documented that women's political leadership breeds improved outcomes, not just for women and girls, but for society as a whole. An increased number of women in government leadership positions delivers progress in policy areas that are crucial for economical and societal advancement and well-being. Today, I am honored to host Her Excellency, Jessica Alupo, Vice President of Uganda, on a discussion that highlights her wide-ranging contributions as a government leader and advocate for, social, for women's social and economical development. Her Excellency Jessica Lupo is a retired major of the Uganda People's Defense Forces and first joined the cabinet as State Minister of Youth in 2009 and later served as Minister of Education and Sports between 2011 and 2015. She is the first person from TESO to be appointed Vice President and only the second female in Uganda to hold that position. Our conversation this morning will delve into the contribution of women in positions of government leadership and how she draws on her own experience. Can we have a warm round of applause for Jessica Lupo? <laughs> Your Excellency. Indeed, some countries have taken much longer than others to, uh, to give women that platform of empowerment that we see today. And in decision-making more in particular, can you please give us your Uganda's experience and which traje trajectory you will be moving on towards uh, achieving these goals? Thank you very much. Allow me to use one minute to thank his Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President of the United Arab Emirates and the ruler of Dubai for inviting me and indeed Uganda to participate in this World Government Summit. And I bring greetings from my country, specifically my President, His Excellency General Yori Kaguta Museveni. I would like to appreciate the question which you have just uh, asked me and respond as follows. The government of Uganda since 1986, led by President Museveni, got the priorities right. What I am suggesting here is that the government deliberately identified women as a special interest group. And government of Uganda laid a strong platform to keep the promise that was made to women then to enable them also to participate in all decision-making forums in the country, but also participate in the economic, uh, economic uh, recovery of the country and, and business. My thinking is that why we have moved so fast the way you think is because government has had political stability 37 years down the road with a routine elections five years 
at intervals of five years. Government has also been able to ensure that the country is peaceful and secure, therefore giving opportunities to women and everybody to productively engage themselves. And also government has ensured that the policies and laws which enable women to participate, but also to ensure that their rights are secured are in place. Summary is that we have political will in Uganda to bring up women, but also including other special interest groups so that there is no one who is grumbling. As women were identified as special interest groups, even older persons, people with disability, and also um, youth were also identified as special interest groups. So issues of women are handled simultaneously with also those other special interest groups. So those special interest groups also become now a platform to encourage and help enable government to raise the status of women at all spheres in government. Your Excellency, I, I want to just do a quick follow-up on this question. In those early days, was there any uh, resistance to, that, to the presence of women in government in, back in 1986, like societal resistance to it? Because normally when, when there are shifts happen, and I'm telling you of the Arab experience, the Arab experience was not an easy experience, but it was never anything that was too full-fledged that it hit he headline news. But there was some societal resistance. Would you say that you also face that in Uganda? That in Uganda, we, of course, have challenges like any other country. But what I have said from 1986 focused on dealing with those challenges, but I can now raise those challenges. One of them, as you may have already known, is that in Africa, we have a patriarchal society, a society that believed a long time ago, and even to some extent now in small sections of society, that it is men who can do everything, and there are some uh, ring-fenced uh, responsibilities, particularly home-related uh, uh, responsibilities which were allocated to women. Yeah. So that Uganda is not exclusive. Uganda was also part of that. But what I'm saying is that from 1986, government dealt with the issues of mindset change. Government dealt with the issues of uh, uh, eradicating some negative aspects of cultural beliefs. Yeah and also cultural practices. For instance, you may have heard of FGM in some uh, societies in Uganda, that practice was there. But government made a law to outlaw it, it was outlawed. But also deliberately formed women movements to go and speak and sensitize the communities, including the health expatriates, to ask the communities to leave out those dangerous and harmful cultural practices and, and also enlighten the communities on, on the dangers. Mm -hmm. So government also has dealt with the issue of uh, patriarchal by providing mass education to everybody. Because initially, as I say, the patriarchal society, a, a boy child would go to school and a girl child would remain at home. Mm -hmm. But government provided universal primary education and also universal secondary education. Because the excuse then was that there are limited resources and the limited resources would be used on a boy child. But when government opened up and provided mass education, there was no excuse. But also government again went on mass media to educate all the parents, the men, all the cultural institutions on the advantages of sending the girl child to school. Then, as you may wish to note, I am here speaking as the Vice President of Uganda. And the first female Vice President of Uganda, who the President of Uganda named sometime in 1989, I was still at school then, was the first Vice President in the whole of Africa. 
if you go in the archives. And as we speak now, we have um, the Speaker of Parliament is also a lady. She's a, a, a female. And the Prime Minister of Uganda is also a female. So as government was dealing with issues of stereotypes among the cultural institutions and the, and the men, government also was giving practical, uh, uh, practical moral models and, 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 and examples of children who would have otherwise been kept at home, like me, if we were to follow those cultures, and now giving them platforms to speak, to even come here in the, in the platform now, and then let the young children see, and also let the community see that what is being spoken can actually be practicable. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. As Vice President of Uganda, what do, what do you recommend or what can governments do to support the inclusion of women in decision-making processes? Is that now they're educated and now they have all the means at their disposal and they have a great person to look up to that has already ma made it. So how would you, how would you add? As a, a female leader, I wouldn't say that we are now experts as women. What I can say is that we still have very strong connection in working with the men and other groups because we can't do it alone. It is men to help us to continue preaching the message that the communities at the grassroots level can also, uh, can also come on board in light of empowering the, the girl children. But I can say a few things. For instance, I have already said that I am now a role model, a mentor to the girl children. When I appear before them, they look up to me, they get the inspiration and the desire to study and reach my level. But I also know that with the platforms government has provided at the local government level, that is LOC5, we have a district, we have a, a village committee, yeah. we have a parish committee. All those committees by law have a special uh, uh, position for women to participate. And all those positions discuss budgets. They discuss budgets, they discuss policies, they discuss uh, issues of how to frame the laws. So my, as a woman, I, I also participate in parliament. I'm also a member of parliament. We discuss budgets, we discuss policies, we discuss laws. So our, 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 our chance to be given this platform it goes a long way because we understand deeply issues of women much more than other, other groups. So when we speak, we are listened to. And most important, we have the, 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 we have the, 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 the rights. We have the rights. We have been given the, 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 the human rights and, and protected yeah. as women to speak what affects women, what affects the girl child, and how we would like to move in light of the global uh, the glo globalization. Uh, and that's why a, a forum like this is very important because what is happening in Tunisia is also compared to what is happening in Uganda. And then as women, we find uh, clear solutions and also rectify where there are challenges and move in the direction with which we would like to move. Thank you, Your Excellency. You have held some very important roles in the government of Uganda, and only the second female to hold the position of uh, vice president. What ch personal challenges did you face on this journey? Okay, now first, first of all, I may have faced challenges from childhood, growing in that society, and uh, also managing to overcome those challenges. First and foremost, there's a challenge of acceptability. Acceptance that, ah, that's a lady, she can also be a vice president. That's a lady, she can also be a minister. She can also be a council, she can also be a leader. So that challenge is one of the challenges I made. But I, overcome, I overcame it by performing my duties diligently. 
by standing out and not just assuming that the responsibility has been given to me because I'm a woman, but the responsibility has been given to me because I'm capable. That's how I have managed to overcome that responsibility. And we, as leaders, have a, a, long, a long way to go because the society expects that we move twice as fast, twice as best, twice as stronger than men. <laughs> we know that... Uh, Your Excellency. That is society, but we are also up to the task. We would like to show you, the men, that we have the capacity. But also we would like to work very closely with you, the men. Your Excellency, you have no idea how happy my wife sitting in the audience is right now with you. <laughs> and then the other challenge, of course, the other challenge, when people are, are recognize that you have the capacity, you are placed there because you can work, then they accept. Mm. And when they accept, it is very easy for you to articulate, and the messages are appreciated and disseminated well. But also as a child, I think I faced the issues of, I come from a very humble background. My father was a primary school teacher, my mother was a nurse in the village there, and we were surrounded with poverty, as you may wish to appreciate some of the societies in Africa. But also, what mattered to me then was the direction that I was being given. Fortunately, being a child of a primary school teacher, the teacher knew that both the girl and the boy must go to school. So listening to parents, listening to authorities, and following the guidance, and also being disciplined, being disciplined. I think coming from that uh, background also informs us as women that when women are empowered economically, then it is possible, it is easy for women to raise other women at the base, at the grassroots. So that was one of the challenges, and that's why I appreciate my government, because it is uh, one of the pillars of, of the programs of women is economic empowerment, where resources have been deliberately prioritized for programs of women, amongst other key competing uh, items of budget, as you may wish to know, in every government. Women's uh, budgets are always prioritized for meetings, for implementation of their economic activities, and also for skilling them and for their special uh, uh, personal uh, interests. Her Excellency Jessica Lupo, uh, Vice President of Uganda, can we get a round of applause? Thank you.